just seconds away from getting this new season started. Mississippi Valley State in green, LSU in white. Tigers will start Baker and Reed and Wright and Williams and Stewart. It'll be Brown, Ume, Gibson, Hamilton, and Washington for Mississippi Valley. A lot of questions to be answered here, Victor, as this team looks to rebound from what was a very poor SEC schedule last year for the Tigers. And, of course, they did quite well in pre-conference play, but then things came apart after winning that first game against Arkansas. And as we just talked about, there are some carryovers from one year ago, but last year Coach McMahon was trying to get through all of the, the cloudiness surrounding the program. As I mentioned, zero players when he got here. Now they feel like they're building a team. They're very happy with the roster that they put together because they went and targeted the players they want for this system. We'll get to see how they debut it tonight. And a couple of points he made earlier today to us he thought post play would be better for LSU and much deeper in terms of size and experience he also thought this year's version of the Tigers would be more potent offensively they certainly were playing at a high pace in the shoot around this afternoon getting ready for tonight's season debut up and down the floor it was a non-stop action pack one hour and ten minutes but they were they're very high on the way this team has played so far in their exhibition game and the way they've done it in camp really before tonight's start LSU putting some players on the floor and a shot clock violation as LSU digging in defensively forces an early turnover on the shot clock violation speaking of the clock when it gets down to five seconds on the shot clock they'll now be tenths of a second indicated as well Stewart and Williams and Wright and Baker and Reed in the starting lineup and a three ball is up and in Player we just focused on the starting lineup, the true freshman getting the first bucket of the season. Mike Williams, a 6'3 freshman from Baltimore, and as you mentioned earlier, seven consecutive years now in which there's been a freshman in the starting lineup to open the year. LSU digging in defensively again. Shot clock expiring, and a late shot, good for two, is tossed home by Ume. He will bail out the Delta Devils there on that one. Turn around with the shot clock at one, gets it to go in. Williams from straight away, it doesn't go. The rebound pulled off by Walter Hamilton, a 6'8 senior from Potts Camp, Mississippi. Tigers take it away. Williams on the move, gets it to Reed. Bounce pass down low. This is Baker working, uses the left hand and draws the foul. Some of that size you were talking about in Will Baker, a seven foot forward out of Austin, Texas. He played in Nevada. Look at him. Pace gets down on the floor, just one on one. He's got more size on that one to get the advantage into the lane where he draws the foul. 20 games in double digits one year ago. 56% field goal. That was the eighth best in Nevada history. One of the big pickups that Coach McMahon was able to get in the transfer portal, bringing some experience to this team as well. He actually started his career at Texas before transferring to Nevada. Baker has range, too. He's a guy who can back up even at seven feet and take three-point shots. LSU leading in the early going. On a three ball and a couple of free throws. This is Brown. Swings it left side. Ume. Down into the paint. Ball taken away. Stripped cleanly as Wright took it away. He almost threw it away trying to start the break, but it'll go back to LSU. There's George Ivory in his 15th season as Mississippi Valley head coach. 132 wins and almost 300 losses. He was a very fine player at that school. A SWAC Hall of Famer, in fact. And a 50% three-point shooter, if you can believe that. And also one of the leaders in assists. Jalen Reed works his way inside. The 6'10 sophomore from Jackson, Mississippi, who had 11 starts at LSU last year. Tigers force another turnover with backcourt pressure. Donovan Sanders checks into the lineup for Mississippi Valley. There's Matt McMahon. Much more comfortable this year, Victor. And in effect, he's starting over for the second straight year. 
Uh, he even said in an interview earlier before the season really got underway, he felt like this was year one. Getting to Baton Rouge late, trying to put together a roster that had no players, going to the portal, find bodies to get here. They did what they could do at the best that they could do it, but now they had a chance to plan out for the season, recruit, target the recruits they wanted to get, got some experience in the portal. Two signees, you know, early signing periods come out on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Reports are LSU has two very good ones that will sign, so now he feels like this really is year one, getting the start from scratch. Mississippi Valley with the basketball. This is Ume, swings it to the other side. Six on the shot clock. Pull up jump shot from the lefty. Donovan Sanders won't go. LSU in white brings it into front court. This is Williams. Williams, the freshman from Baltimore. He's at the point, kicks it left side. Nice pass down in for the flush. Jalen Reed to Will Baker. Great job by the Tigers, passing it around the horn. Then they go towards the baseline, feed up to the free throw line. They get the defense to move up and the easy bounce pass for the dunk. 9-2, LSU off to a seven-point lead, and the Tigers will make their first substitutions. Go back and take a look. You see on the wing, they go to the top, the defense, everybody looking at the ball, and they forget about big number nine. It's hard to forget about him at seven feet, but a nice job of just posting up. Great look, easy pass. He knows what to do with him. He's that close. Tyrell Ward. And Derek Fountain will check in for LSU. Reginald Reynolds at the free throw line out of Sparta, Georgia. Have you ever been to Itabina, Mississippi? It's in the Delta, about three and a half hours from here. Actually, back in early TV days, I was there covering SWAC basketball. And the Southern Jazz right there playing. I can check that off the list. That entry pass didn't get to the target, easily stolen by Mississippi Valley. Tigers try to double up and a good shot down low using the window. That one pumped home by Brown. That's his first bucket. Stewart wants it at the top. He'll pull up and take the high arching three. Nothing but twine. Carlos Stewart, a three ball, the junior from Baton Rouge. In fact, Victor, a couple of players on this roster coming home, so to speak. Absolutely. Carlos Stewart and Jordan Wright both played for the Tigers at the Dunham School. Led Dunham to state championships. Carlos Stewart was the number two recruit in the state by ESPN when he was leaving Baton Rouge. Another bucket by Brown. 12-7, LSU by five. Right feeds it in the corner for Fountain. They go left side, three ball up, three ball in. Tyrell Ward out of Washington, D.C. The 6-6 sophomore bangs home a deep one. LSU by eight. 1445 to go, first half. Five made field goals for the Tigers. Three of the five are from three-point land. That fadeaway jumper from the free-throw line by Brown misses left. Tigers loaf into front court. Ward feeds a teammate for a three-ball right side. It rims out. Ball is on the floor, picked up by Wright, the shooter. He'll back up, gives it to Ward. They go to the other wing now. Ward wants it back at the top. Instead, they go inside. Baker is fouled on his way down the left side of the lane. Jordan Wright did a nice job of keeping that possession alive when he missed the shot, got the offensive rebound. Tigers swing it around, and Baker's able to get it on the inside and draw the foul. First time out of the first half, 14-19 to go at the Maryland Assembly Center. LSU up 15-7. Austin, Texas. He's a 52% field goal shooter throughout his career. We had a chance to talk to Coach McMahon this afternoon after shoot-around. I know you asked him, hey, if Baker steps out, do you think teams are going to guard him? And he said, well, I hope so, because if nothing else, it's going to empty the lane. But, you know, teams are, are questioning whether or not he's going to hit it. It'll be two or three that he'll put in before they realize he's a good shooter. There aren't a lot of left-handed seven-footers going around, are there? This follow for too. Good shooting form. He's got six to lead everybody. 
And he will lead the game right now. 56% from the floor last year when he was at Nevada, 84% from the free throw line. So, you know, the guy with that size attacking the rim, he's going to get fouled. He did a really good job converting at the line. Collins has entered the game, a 6'9 junior from Atlanta, Texas, who transferred to LSU from Kentucky. And the Tigers will get it back. A 10-point lead for LSU. We are six minutes into the first half. Good to see a healthy Milwaukee Wilkinson into the lineup for the first time tonight. We watched him for an hour take three-point shots in the shoot-around session this afternoon, and I don't think he missed but about two. Williams spinning his way close. There's Collins, and a little jump hook in the lane is good. How about that elevation, too, by Collins? Great job by Collins, a 6'9 transfer, played at Kentucky. Out of Atlanta, Texas. Boy, the elevation he had on that shot by the rim. Oof. LSU by 12. 13 and a half to go. This is Ward on the outside. Ward sneaking his way, pushes up the short jumper, gets it back, scores, and is fouled. Jay, uh, excuse me, Tyrell Ward. A 6'6 sophomore from the nation's capital, able to score on the second chance. Great jump stop there, but watch how he keeps his eyes on it with the focus, hits the air, and then doesn't even worry about bringing it back down. Just elevates right back up and in, gets hit on the wrist, chance for a three-point play. Do you give him an assist on that? <laughs> no, because I don't think he's trying to, to pad the stats right now. He was just wanting to go out and get it. He did get the rebound, though. 21-7, LSU leading, as expected in the first half, against Mississippi Valley, a team which really has fallen on hard times in recent years. They won five games last year and have not had a good season in a while. Well, that's why they brought that man in right there, George Ivory. 13 seasons at Arkansas Pine Bluff. He helped turn that program around. He did. Finished fourth one year in the SWAC and then on a season when I think they started 0-11, they finished the season 18-5, went all the way to the tournament and won a play-in game. Here's a three ball. May have been tipped on the way up. The outlet pass is intercepted. Mississippi Valley trying to convert. Shot at the rim will not go for Brown. He had a point-blank range look. Tigers running on the other end. It's getting helter-skelter. One-on-one -on -one contact, and the shot is up and good. Donovan Sanders survived the contact and was able to muscle it in. Well, LSU had a couple of opportunities there on that possession just to hold down, hold it, slow things down a little bit to keep possession, but as you mentioned, got a little ragtag there on the floor, and Sanders was able to take advantage for Mississippi Valley. Williams, the freshman point guard, directing traffic, gets a pick, gets to the free throw line, launches one, it's too strong. Rebound tipped around and eventually stolen by Ward as it bounces deep. Ward will take the three from distance and he is fouled. There'll be three free throws coming. He hit his only other three point attempt earlier. That time getting fouled, what you don't want to do as a defender especially when he's this far behind the line. A good three feet back, but you can see Sanders jumping towards him instead of straight up vertically. Momentum just took him into him. So Ward will be at the line for a while. He had 15 attempts at the line last year, 10 of 15, 67%. He's got six points to match Baker. Now he is the team leader in scoring early in this first half. Jalen Reed comes back in. Fountain goes to the bench. And Stewart returns to the lineup as well. Carlos Stewart. And Ward converts all three free throws. LSU will apply some pressure in backcourt now. Sanders retreats, pounds his chest, calling out a play. Seven to shoot. Four to shoot. Two to shoot. 
air ball and a shot clock violation. And the Tigers were digging in defensively and Mississippi Valley never got into a, a an offensive flow that time. We took a timeout right here, 11.31 to go first half. LSU as expected, leading 24. With so many officials and so many games being played basically every night of the week, the job that he did and how much he meant to these officials. And very nice for them to share that story that they were wearing that bracelet for him. So we return to play. LSU leading 24 to 9 in the first half here in Baton Rouge. Game number one. Tigers will be back in action on Friday against Nichols. And a foul called as LSU was approaching the rim with gusto. Jalen Reed was cut off. You see how he takes this step. Quick turn, power step up to dunk. Something I noticed this afternoon, and Lynn was telling you this about it while we were watching, when they were doing their drills, how many times they were finishing with dunks. And you might think, well, it's easy. There's nobody on the floor, and they're just running. But when you do it over and over, it gets you in that mindset. As When you see an avenue like mm -hmm. that, you take it, you go right to the rim. LSU has been good from the free throw line for the most part. By the way, let's get you updated on a women's score. LSU and Colorado doing battle in Las Vegas on the women's side of things. And the defending national champions are trailing at halftime after giving up 24 points in the second quarter. And it's now 38 to 32. Colorado at halftime leads the LSU Tigers. You wear quite the bullseye when you bring home the hardware like LSU did one year ago. Big matchup to start the season for them. Two more quarters to play. LSU led 16-14 in a close first quarter, but then gave up 24 second quarter points and trails by six at the break. Here on the men's side, it's a 15-point lead. Pull-up jump shot, right side elbow, and that rolls over the backboard. Now, the top of the backboard is still in play, but once it rolls behind it, it is out of bounds. LSU 26, Mississippi Valley's Delta Devils 11. One thing that man would like to see, six assists on seven made field goals for LSU so far. That's good stuff. Stewart hands it off. This is right. He'll back up. Tries to make the entry pass, and there's a sumo wrestling match going on down low. Well, that's 5'11", Donovan Sanders, who's trying to hold his part on 7-foot Will Baker. Plus the struggle. Baker had him posted up. He was doing everything he could with Sanders to try to get around and get some sort of post position, knowing that if Baker got it, he was going to dunk on him. They basically wrestled each other to the ground. Reed will take the three from straight away and misses, but the air ball winds up in the hands of Mawani Wilkinson. Baker backing in, uses the left hand, and is able to power it in. Oh, and that's the word, power. He just backed his way on that one. Close enough where he just take one dribble, just uses his strength and his size to back his way in close to the basket. Eight points for Will Baker. Take a look again as he gets the entry pass for Jordan Wright. One dribble, power move, then it just elevates. Here it is again from underneath the basket. He's just going to spin. One dribble, one big power move. He backs the defender up, and he's got good elevation where he can just get on top of everybody and put it in from about four feet away. And a strategically placed elbow as well to create a little space. Muscle whistles blown. It's a good play, right? Yep. Nice spin move with the left hand. That was beautifully done by Arico Gibson. Gibson actually changed jersey numbers before the game. He's now 23, but he normally wears number two. LSU will reinsert Mike Williams, the freshman guard from Baltimore at the next whistle. Now he's summoned back to the bench. Here's another spin move, but LSU's Reed does a nice job defensively. 15 is the lead, nine points, uh, nine minutes to go in the first half. And the quick release jump shot is in and out, missed by Brown. Return is good. 
Tigers. Brown with seven. The two Tigers right there for the rebound. They let it hit the floor. Went right back to Raekwon Brown. Was able to just put it up and in. Basically got a gift there that time from the Tigers. Couldn't hold on to it. Wright takes it strong. This is Baker. Misses from the free throw line. Had a lot of time to set up for that one. But a little bit strong off the back iron. A three ball from straight away rips the bottom of the net. That one cranked home by Brown. He's got 10 now. He scored the last five points for Mississippi Valley, and LSU is going to take a timeout. 10, 28 18, another 18 points. 10 have come from that man right there. Raekwon Brown has been attacking the rims, found his way into the paint successfully. That's been a problem for LSU's defense. Both of these teams have scored 10 points each in the paint. Raekwon Brown on the game so far, four of seven. He's hit two three-pointers for his 10 points. The big fellow is able to split a couple of defenders down low, and Will Baker now has matched Raekwon Brown's 10-point total. They are the leading scorers in this contest. Mississippi Valley is eight for 16 from the floor. LSU now nine of 18, both teams shooting 50%. Three three-pointers in seven tries for LSU. Mississippi Valley is two for four. One of the big differences in this game, Victor, is LSU's free throw shooting. They've converted nine of ten, and Mississippi Valley is over two, so the lead is basically at the free throw line. And when Baker's getting shots like he just had, he's either going to get an easy two or you're going to send him to the line. He's double teamed. Keeps that pivot foot down. Now spins and fires and gets it again. You know how you know how smart that is. How well trained you are to have to spin twice but not move that pivot foot. It wasn't there the first time. He rotated around and then went back, but never lifted the pivot foot. And then he was able to get up there and find the easy shot. That's, That's over good. back. Yeah, it's going to be a backcourt violation. The receiver of the pass had not established position on the offensive side of midcourt. That's good defense by LSU. Danny Washington was trying to sprint his way out of the backcourt, but wasn't there in time. As the pass caught him coming from the backcourt, so another turnover. LSU has 11 points already off of Mississippi Valley turnovers. Pending more here on this possession. This is Reed. He goes baseline. Reverse dunk is good. Reed able to power it up and in. The 6'10 sophomore from Jackson, Mississippi. 11 starts in an LSU uniform a year ago. Reed with six points now. Pass to the wing is saved by Mississippi Valley. Three-point shot is up and a little bit strong. Hamilton missed it. Tigers on the run. Reed's pass down court easily intercepted by Hamilton. That's the fifth turnover for LSU. Rebound on the offensive end. Hits the floor. The little jump hook is good by Hamilton. Mississippi Valley is certainly not watching the action. They trail by 14, but they're not backing down. Jordan Wright just showing his experience. The years he played having left Baton Rouge and gone to Vanderbilt, now back in Baton Rouge. He's another one of those that played at Dunham. Such a good player to get to the basket. One of the 1,000-point scorers in Vanderbilt history, 51st member of the 1,000-point club. He averaged 10 and a half points last year with five rebounds, did Wright. And made 74 starts at Vanderbilt. There is contact and a foul. And Mississippi Valley, which has not been to the free throw line very often, will have an opportunity here. That's going to be on Baker, that seven foot frame, just not able to get his hands up vertical. You see the quick dribble there. You see he comes down on. He tried to jump vertical, he was moving, then he sw swatted down with his arms and his hands. He Throwing knew it. Foul. You could see the grimace on his face. That's his first foul. LSU has five team fouls. Seven for Mississippi Valley. Derek Fountain, who played earlier for a while off the bench, has returned for LSU. Just under six minutes to go in the first half. Jordan Johnson, second free throw coming.
Ernest Minton, a 6'6 senior from Indianola, Mississippi, has come into the game for the Devils. 5.45 to play. Baker wants it low. Baker spinning back, draws a double team and a foul. That's a nifty little move there. Everybody on the court thought he was going to go left with the left hand, and he put on the brakes and came back to the right side. So he has shown us his ability to hold that pivot foot when he spins two or three times. He can rotate left. He can rotate right. Watch this time to Lynn's point. He gets the bounce pass. I think he's going one way, spins back the other. That's where the help defense comes over, and they draw the foul. But it was Brown who's giving up six inches on that help side, and he was called for the foul. And now we've seen LSU be able to establish Will Baker on the inside. They're basically going to force the Delta Devils to do one or two things. You have to double team him, or you're going to watch him have a career night, one or the other, because his size, they don't have anybody that can match up. So they're going to have to change their defense, double team him, or LSU is going to just feed him until they decide they don't want to do it anymore. LSU with the steal and right with the one handed slam. Jordan Wright caught that ball near midcourt and had smooth sailing to the rim. This is the largest lead now. 19 for the Tigers. It's blown up this last few minutes. LSU was down by up by only 10, Victor, a couple of minutes ago, and now it's nearly doubled. Yeah, it's a 12-3 run for LSU since Matt McMahon called that timeout. It's getting frenetic underneath the bucket, and a shot clock violation has been called, or the ball was out off of Mississippi Valley. We have seen Jordan Wright do this before in this building. He's just done it in the black and gold of Vanderbilt. And the Commodores had come, and he would always try to step up his game a little more, coming back in front of his family and friends. Great defense and the easy dunk there. And on that last possession, LSU was able to get the steal but then falling out of bounds, heads up play by Tyrell Ward who threw it off the Delta Devils' legs to keep the possession for LSU. Trey Hannibal, Mike Williams, Jordan Wright, Will Baker, and Derek Fountain are on the floor for LSU. Baker spinning, fading, firing, and travels. He's called for the turnover, but he's got a sweet release, doesn't he, for a seven-footer? And he has a plethora of moves down there on the block. That time even stepping out a little bit for the fadeaway jump shot. Baker got his hands on that pass and deflects it out of bounds. LSU by 19, four and a half to go. First half, first game of the 2023-24 season. By the way, Victor, you know the clock is ticking. I just want to remind you that there are 132 days until Selection Sunday. <laughs> You're already going there, huh? I mean, it's I'm never excited. too I'm never too to early, right? 132 days from today, Selection Sunday. Be here before you know. A deep three from straight away, on line but long, and a nice offensive rebound pulled off by Mahan, and he was fouled. And you have to know, when you're taking a three-pointer from that deep, you know the rule in basketball, the long shots lead to long rebounds. That was a perfect example as it clanked off the iron, came all the way back out by the free throw line. The Tigers, she's not in a position to get the rebound. LSU defending the inbounds pass and nearly got the five-second call. 4.18 to go in the first half, 19 on the shot clock. LSU leads by 19. The LSU switches on the top defensively. This is Brown, and he angles it in. Brown, well up into double figures. He's got 12 now with a variety of shots. That's the second tough shot we've seen by Raquan Brown, bodying up and forcing his way in, but getting it off the glass. Now you notice LSU with Will Baker out in the big size, seven foot out, five wide for LSU outside the lane. Good job there by Trey Hannibal to drive the lane and get the easy layup. That's the first bucket for Hannibal. Out of Elliott, South Carolina. He, of course, was with McMahon at Murray State. A 
Three ball is off the mark. Big rebound and the outlet pass. That's left a little bit short by Mike Williams. But LSU wasted no time in creating a shot. Let's take a timeout here. 3-12 to go in the first half in the Merrimack Center. Game one of the new season. LSU 42. Mississippi Valley State 23. BK Royal Crispy Wraps. Eat it with the meal or have it. Found cars of the old CBA, believe it or not, to get his opportunity to play a little bit. This is a team that does not play a home game for a long time. It's January 6th. That's the first home game for Mississippi Valley State. It's on a, uh, a financial tour to yep. fatten the coffers because they've got a lot of guaranteed games all over the country. Yeah, 13 games on the road before they hit the home court, and I believe it's their second SWAC game of the season before they make their debut in early January. But, you know, it, it is... It's the nature of the athletics right now for yep. the smaller schools like this. And they're, and they're not just driving to Baton Rouge or, or driving to Rust. They're going all over the country. they got a lot of games spread out everywhere, but the paycheck will help fill the financial coffers as well and help, help the athletic budget. Collins drills both free throws for LSU. The lead is 6 step back 3 comes up a little bit short off the hand of Sanders deep rebound to the corner and Mississippi Valley will reset it another indication of a long rebound but it goes off the foot Ward brings it up and throws it away LSU a little bit sloppy back to back turnovers and a whistle so it's 11, 11 turnovers for Valley and 7 now for LSU so to finish up the thought about the, the schedule and what Valley is, is doing, they're starting tonight, they make the easy drive down to Baton Rouge. But next up, they're going to play Oklahoma. So they'll go to Norman. Then they're going up to the East Coast. They're going to play UConn. Then they're going to find their way to Fort Worth and face TCU. And that's just getting it started. <laughs> Ernest Minton. Missing. He'll try it again. And misses again. The rebound snared by Derek Fountain. This is Ward leaning over the dribble. Kicks it back to Fountain at the top. Fountain hands it off to Wilkinson. The Tigers can't convert. And Mississippi Valley comes the other way. Two minutes to play in the first half. 44-23 LSU. Brown is at a nice first half. Spins and fires. Misses off the window. Tips around. And and it's still on the floor, and there's a scramble. And a whistle finally as players are hitting the deck from everywhere. LSU will put Will Baker back in the game. And also Carlos Stewart. Mississippi Valley really shows a good fight on the offensive end. They have just as many offensive rebounds as defensive rebounds. A little bit of an alert for LSU to pay attention to that they're fighting so hard on these missed shots. To get the rebounds 10 of 25 from the floor so 40 percent two of eight from deep Donovan Sanders will be at the free throw line he's a Mississippian and the lefty bags the first one 5 points for him also has four rebounds tonight. Baker grabs the miss. The lead is 20 for the Tigers who have the ball. Baker fake the three, takes a giant step and lays it in with the left hand. Boy, and how about the nice up and under too. So Mississippi Valley read the scouting report. He can shoot from deep. He hasn't done it tonight, but they challenged the three-pointer. One big dribble, two big strides, and then a little curl at the end for the layup. How about this for a debut for Will Baker in an LSU uniform? 16 points in the first half. He'll take the three. 19 points in the first half. How about that rotation? That'll get a quick timeout from Valley. 
It's been the Will Baker show tonight. Quite a debut it is in Baton Rouge. So you get a two-footer, and then you get a 20-footer yeah. from the seven-footer. He certainly is showing a comfort level so far in game one in Mac McMahon's offense. 22 games, I mentioned earlier, 22 games in double digits last season, and his 56% field goal shooting was eighth best in school history. That's a back and forth violation. Donovan Sanders was straddling the line, but he, he dribbled it in backcourt. 13 turnovers now for Valley. A 25 point lead, 68 seconds to go, first half. And remember, since that timeout for LSU, Tigers have hit eight of the last ten from the floor. Valley one of the last seven and no field goals in the last three minutes for Mississippi Valley. This is Baker. Let's see what he does with it here. Baker sets up LSU in a double high post. Now Baker is the single high. He'll take it. Bakes goes inside. Yes. Yep. Saw that dunk coming. You can see that a mile away. As soon as he pulled that defender up and there was nobody in the lane for help defense, you could see that dunk was on its way. One big dribble, two big strides. So Baker with 21. His career high was 28 against New Mexico last year. That is in big jeopardy. Brown's having a good night as well. He's Look got 14. Pass. And it'll go to Mississippi Valley with 25 seconds to play. And Carlos Stewart with the foul, frustrated because of a beautiful bounce pass from Will Baker. He just came up short under the rim, missed the layup. And they try to go get the loose foul. Go back to Baker again. Look, one pump fake and no green jerseys. You could just see that set up. A country mile. Look at that reach and the big strides. Players in green jersey probably saw that and realized that, that's why I'm not standing down there because that's coming at me. Danny Washington will shoot free throws. A one and one opportunity. Washington has not scored tonight until that free throw. He started 20 of 29 games last year for Valley. Average five points a game. This is Williams, the freshman point guard, leaning over the dribble. There's contact and a foul in backcourt, and the foul will be charged against Washington. So 19.7 seconds to go. LSU has led throughout. Free throws coming for Williams. Mike Williams, the heralded freshman from Baltimore. He's the number three ranked player in Maryland, top 100 in the nation. He averaged 14 and a half points a game. He led the National Interscholastic Basketball Conference with three steals per game. So good on offense, outstanding on defense. And there's his fifth point of the first half. Seven seconds to play. And there's a bump in the lane. Williams inadvertently ran into the dribbler. Williams called for the foul. You're playing defense. If the offensive player is shoulder to shoulder with you, you're beat. Yep. You've got to get that extra step. You have to turn. You can't just shuffle with them. You didn't have to turn, sprint, and run to get in front of them. And that time, Williams just got caught late on the dribble, trying to catch up. If he's Long even, he's leaving. That's exactly right. Great way to put it. We'll see what Ellis can do with five seconds to go. End of half, something they were working on. They were walking through it. Yep. Really touching base on everything. In five seconds, let's see if, if he makes this, get it on the inbounds, and how they can get it down the floor. Coming up at halftime, an SEC basketball report with Dari Noka. So stay tuned for it. Three ball up and three ball in. A high arc. 
overarching teardrop three ball by Tyrell Ward. And that ends the first half. Ward from distance knocks it down, and LSU has scored 56 in the first 20 minutes. We started this in 20, let's, let me figure this out, 2003. We have had, uh, we, we have seen some things. Huh? We've had a lot of games, a lot of fun experiences. This one's just adding to it. And there'll be five more on the SEC Network Plus here from this arena. And, of course, every LSU basketball game this year, men and women, will be available on one of the platforms. Mississippi Valley in green, LSU in white as we get things restarted here in the second half. By the way, things are not going well for the LSU Tigers out in Las Vegas on the women's side. The defending national champions are down in the third yeah, quarter. Heavy is the crown of the champion. They're out there against Colorado, number 20. Two minutes to go, under two minutes to go in the third quarter. LSU is trailing. 63-51, the last uh, score I had. That's a nice pass down low and a foul called. Back to back fouls here to start the second half on Jalen Reed. Got one trailing his man on the baseline earlier than that time. Just bites on the fake, gets caught in the air. You see him come over, help side, but he hits the fake, and then there's nothing you can do about that. And so you come down. It's a nice job of drawing the foul. Got to stay on that floor. Rico Gibson at the free throw line. A 6 7. Senior from Memphis. thrown away, but Baker is able to save it in front of his own bench after a teammate did the splits underneath the, the rim. And the teammate is the man who has the ball right now, Jordan Wright, driving the lane, good up and under. Lost control, did Wright early on, lost the ball. Baker saves it, then Wright's able to work his way down the lane for the easy two. Six for Wright. LSU takes it away, two on one break. Stewart scoops it up, misses, but there is a whistle. And the Tigers are trying to commit or convert these turnovers into points. And have done a pretty good job of it so far. Stewart will have an opportunity at the free throw line. At that time, a double Tiger connection. Jordan Wright to Carlos Stewart as an LSU Tiger and both former Dunham Tigers that time. Boy, Carlos Stewart. That young man, when he was at Dunham, I was telling you this shooter, if he hasn't put mm -hmm. on 25, 30 pounds, he hasn't gained an ounce. He was very slender, quick as lightning, could get to the rim, spent a couple of seasons. He had outstanding seasons out at Santa Clara. First team all West Coast Conference player last year at Santa Clara. But he has bulked up, looks great, still has that quick speed, and just excited for him. I know he's excited to get back home from where he played his high school ball and come back now to wear an LSU jersey. That man mentioned to us earlier that when he came down for a visit, it was almost like his first time. He never really had a look from LSU. Decided to go out west to Santa Clara, but now he's come back, and he said the smile was from ear to ear when he came in and put on that LSU jersey. Well, he had 24 double-figure scoring games last year, and 10 times he scored at least 20. So he was a point producer at 15-plus per game was Carlos Stewart. Yeah, and how about leading the conference in steals? Mm -hmm. Better than two a game. LSU by 29. Baker got a hand on it. That's his first block tonight. Reverse layup on the drive. Won't go by Williams. Just not enough spin. He tried with a bad angle. Tried to get it in there with a little English. Just not enough to get up and over the rim. This ball is on the floor. And Baker is able to come off with the ball. Let's see if Baker takes it. He does. Bam! Oh, my! That's a seven-footer. That's the second time he has backed up and stroked it from distance. 
24 for Baker. Nice pull up jump shot over Baker, but it would not go by Brown. Brown was the leading scorer in the first half for Mississippi Valley with 14. Here's a three from straight away. Well off the mark to the left side, missed by Williams. Yeah, sorry, I was, I was looking for the defender's name because Baker realized he wasn't going to get out there to guard him. The problem was he's wearing 25, and I can't find 25 on the roster. I'm looking on the official score. I don't see a 25. Let's just say the big man. How about that? Yep. And there is an injured Mississippi Valley player, but he's going to get up and is smiling, and at least that's good news. That is Ernest Minton who took a fall. We're making the correction on our score sheets as we go. We think Daniel Umo is now 25. He was listed yes. as 35. And that's why I couldn't find him. But seeing him stand next to Baker, yep. and they've got Umo at 6'9", 245, that's Umo. <laughs> we'll go with that. How about Jordan Wright knocking it down from three-point range in front of his own bench? A wing three. Nine for him. Good fight by Fountain down low, but he was outnumbered three to one trying to get that rebound. That was a good, good uh, job by Gibson there to stay airborne. He drew the foul on Will Baker. He had to extend his launch there as Baker's seven-foot frame was coming at him. But did a nice job of elevating to the point where he could draw the foul. That's the second. Rico Gibson shoots that knuckleball free throw. How about that? A one-handed knuckle, you know how tough that is? Yeah. Without any kind of follow-through? Yeah. You don't see that quite often. Let's see how if there's any rotation on this this shot. Not much. Doesn't matter what it looks like in the air as long as it finds the bottom That's of the exactly net. Exactly right. Mountain down to Baker. Spins, spins, left hand. No, oh, another one. Um, Valley didn't make any sort of adjustment of what they either going to a zone defense or double teaming Baker. And again, he's going to, you do that, he'll cruise past his career high of 28 that he set against New Mexico one year ago. He's only two points Coming away from it right now. 26 for Baker. Yeah, they just don't have anybody that's going to match up one on one with him. The best they're going to do is try to put Daniel Umo down there. But Baker's going to be quicker than Umo is. And anybody else, he just has a size advantage and a power advantage. 67-32. Baker has 26 of those 67. A backup three won't go by right. A little flat on the iron. And well done down the lane. And that's been the one consistent star for Valley tonight to debut for the season, Raekwon Brown. That's his first bucket of the second half. He had 14 in the first half, and a distance three tossed home by Jordan Wright. 12 for him. LSU with three and double figures tonight, led by Baker's 26. And we'll take a timeout right here with 15.36 remaining in the second half. We're in Baton Rouge where LSU is leading Mississippi Valley 70 to 34. Oh, they've got three or four guys that have Louisiana ties on that roster. Remember last year, they just had to fill the roster. They, they, they had no choice. But this year they had choices. And they said, yes, it was by design. And they went to got guys that have experience and leadership that they can bring to this team. But also that Louisiana value, Jordan Wright being one of them. Oh, my. That is the big left-hander again. Will Baker, 28 points. That matches his career high. What a way to do it. 
Boy, does he cover some real estate with those two steps. It has been a Will Baker show with 28 in the first 25 minutes. Ward, Baker, takes the three, gets it to a teammate who's nearly clotheslined and a foul with Trey Hannibal taking it to the rim. Here it is with Baker as he gets past his defender who looked like he slipped was Walden. And once again, he picks up that dribble, those two giant steps, and then that long wingspan gets him up over the rim so high. And you look at his line, Lynn. He's only missed one shot. Yep. 10 of 11 from the floor. He's hit both his three pointers and hit all six of his free throws. Near perfection for Baker offensively. He wants it in the post. Now he'll back out and hand it back off. And he sat seven minutes in the first half. Let's get a shot right now at the shot clock if we can. It's got 3.9 seconds. Well, they just changed it. Bad timing on my part, but th this year, when the shot clock gets to five, it then starts going to 4.9, 4.8, 4.7, right. et cetera. Much like the game clock does when it's under a minute. Now oh, the shot clock will Baker do missed that one. To your point, the, the game clock goes to tenths of a second under a minute. Now the shot clock will do it when it hits the five. Baker can set up a new career high at the free throw line, which I would expect he would when you see that he's perfect from the line tonight. This is a seven footer. Left-hander crouches, oh. and it rattles out. I'll take the hit on that one. That's his first miss at the free throw line. And only the second miss in the game from anywhere. There you have it, a new career high for Will Baker, 29 points. That's the most he's ever scored in a collegiate game. And the 29 come in this debut here in the Maravich Center, and he goes to the bench for a while. Fountain clears the rebound for LSU. You saw how high Damian Collins got up there trying to defend that shot. It changed the way that shot went up, knowing that big number 10 at 6'9 was going to elevate. Now let's see how the Tigers operate without Baker. Fountain on the give and go. Three ball left side. Collins rattles it home. Well, the one consistent we saw from LSU earlier when Baker was sitting during those seven minutes of the first half is without that big inside presence, they went five wide, which allows you the opportunity to drive the lane and kick out like you saw right there for the three. Seven points for Collins after the tray. Hamilton, and it's out of bounds, and it'll stay with the nice. Devils with seven on the shot clock. Nice block, though, by Derek Fountain. Indeed it was. There's Mawani Wilkinson coming back into the game. Good to see a healthy Mawani Wilkinson. Oh, yes. He had a lot of shoulder problems last year, played less than half the season. And nine starts in 12 games before going out. And I think a lot of shoulder issues. Oh, bank that in. I think a lot of shoulder issues is an understatement. I don't think we all know just how much pain he was in in the issues before they finally had to sit him. That last three ball by Sanders as he banked it home. Mississippi Valley trying to get a run out basket, but it's out of bounds on the other end. That's good effort. Great effort down big to see him go for a play like that. Sanders. Certainly give him credit. He's limping a little bit, but apparently will stay in the game. Sanders now leaning over defensively. Fountain at the top. Hannibal. Collins. Thought about taking the three. And there is a three ball. Banged home by Wilkinson now. Again, in shoot-around today, we saw him rarely miss. We saw him shoot at least 20 times, and he hit must have hit 16 or 17. Yeah, he, he was 
talked to some of the coaches. They said one of the big things for him because of that shoulder injury, said especially with the, the, the mini trip they took in the offseason and then in the exhibition game, was for him seeing some of those shots go down, that confidence factor coming back, not having to worry about the injury and finding that confidence to shoot. Sure did look good on that shot, and he definitely looked good during a shoot around. He wasn't just hitting from one side. He was hitting from all sides. 79-37, LSU prevailing. It's coming to us. Save. Twelve and a half to play. Hannibal gambling out front. Couldn't make the steal, but the shot clock is down to seven. Pull-up jump shot is no good. Hannibal fighting for the rebound. It hits the floor. Collins picks it up. Collins fakes the three, puts it on the floor. One giant step and lays it in on the left side. Yeah, give him credit for keeping that balance, too, because he took an awkward step. Another foot. He might have gotten called for the travel, so he kept his balance. And was able to change hands and put it up and in. Nine for Collins. LSU 81. Mississippi Valley State 37. You know, Victor, as we look around the SEC at the start of the season, and we'll pick up that story in just a moment, we've got a timeout as LSU is leading by a huge margin, 81-37, 11.44 to go. And that Charleston Classic also available on ESPN2. And shortly after that, they'll have a game where they're going to be at Syracuse. You said they're at Syracuse. They also have Kansas State. Part of the... The conference matchup, big conference, conference matchup. That'll be a big game in early December. Wilkinson finds the bottom of the net again from distance. Still hitting. And Hunter Dean has entered the lineup during the timeout, a 6'10 graduate student from Mandeville. His previous stop was at George Washington. We talked about the shooting that Baker had when he was at Nevada. How about Hunter Dean? He shot 64% last season at George Washington. That was the fourth best in George Washington history. That rolls off the tongue rather easily, but 64% from the field is phenomenal. He'll back in, back in, spin, put it up. He was fouled by Walter Hamilton. All of the SEC teams tonight are winning handily. With the exception of Georgia. Georgia was beaten by Oregon 82-71, but that's going to be apparently the only SEC team with a loss after tonight. Georgia knocked off by Oregon 82-71. And speaking of scores, as we go to the women's side, LSU is losing by 20. Yeah, LSU fans aren't going to hear that one. It, it has been all Colorado tonight. Very physical against the number one preseason number one team in the country. They took it to LSU tonight. The lead has uh, been cut to 15, but there's not a whole lot of time left in the fourth quarter. 88-73, the latest score. That's a lot of points given up by the Tigers. That's on the women's side of things in Las Vegas. LSU's women will return here on Thursday to meet Queens College. We'll have it for you right here on the SEC ESPN Network. Man, this will be a tough loss for LSU to swallow. we be going to Vegas and facing a top 20 team, but it will be a special night Thursday night here when they come to the Maravich Assembly Center and drop that banner. Every season ticket has been sold for LSU women's basketball. A foul will put Collins at the free at the free throw line after he was bumped trying to dunk. Ten and a half to go. 84-37. But Collins has a lot of raw athleticism too. You know, I don't know if we'll ever see it, but it would be interesting to see Collins at 6'9, Dean at 6'10, and Baker at 7 feet in the lineup at the same time. Well, give you two power players. Gives you a lot of length with all three. Give you two players that can step outside. I don't see why you would. Now, when LSU wants to play more speed, you might not. But that certainly would be an interesting threesome down there on the bottom with that size. Collins has a long reach, doesn't he? Well, he had a stop at Kentucky where he averaged maybe two points a game. He just didn't really get an opportunity. But this was a consensus five-star player out of high school that averaged better than 35 points a game. 
Number 10 in white for LSU Collins. He is defending now. They swing it to the left side for a three ball. Collins jumped too early. That one went yeah. right over his shoulder. Right, right, right over him. There was nobody behind him. Good hands there for the steal by Milwaukee Wilkinson. Stewart fakes left, dribbles right, takes it strong, hangs in the air, shoots, no good. Dean battling for it, and it's taken instead in the corner Look, he missed by that, Hamilton. He missed that shot, but I'm telling you, in his, in his high school days, that's what he was known for, Carlos Stewart. The quick dribble, the crossover, getting to the front of the rim. That time he just happened to miss. And Wilkerson with the emphatic block on the other end, but the foul was called. LSU will make a substitution. Jalen Reed, the 6'10 sophomore from Jackson, Mississippi. We'll check in at the next available opportunity. There he is. Danny Washington misses the first one. Mississippi Valley's been stuck in the 30s for a while. Collins is relieved by Reed. Another shoot really turned up the the pressure and the pace in this ball game. 19-3 run for LSU over the last six minutes. And there was illegal entry into the lane before the shot, so this is going to be another opportunity for Danny Washington, a six-foot senior from Greenville, Mississippi. That's up in the Delta. Eighty-six thirty-eight. A bucket here would give LSU a fifty-point lead. And it may come at the free throw line. He's wondering on that pass if Wright was looking for Reed to go up for the alley oop. Had the open lane. He just waited on that pass. Might have been able to elevate, but either way, draw the foul and go to the line. Reed has six tonight, three rebounds and a couple of assists. This for a 50-point lead. It's 49. Back to the SEC for a moment, Victor. A nation leading five teams are ranked in the Associated Press preseason poll from the SEC. Tennessee number nine, Arkansas 14, Texas A&M 15, Kentucky 16, and Alabama 24. That's the most teams in the preseason top 25 from any league in the country. A lot of high expectations coming from the conference this year with Tennessee leading the way. And I think there's three or four other teams right behind them that were getting yep. votes that's just outside the top 25. Yeah, Auburn, Mississippi State, Missouri, and Florida as well getting some votes. That's good by Rico Gibson. Four coaches in the SEC rank among the winningest active coaches in the country. John Calipari is fourth. Rick Barnes is sixth. Bruce Pearl is 15th. And Kermit Davis is 29th. That's a familiar name around here. Absolutely, sure enough. Well, if you've just joined us, the big story of the night offensively for the Tigers, Will Baker. He may not play anymore. He's been on the bench for four or five minutes, but Will Baker, 29 points tonight in his debut. Just a couple of misses from the floor and the free throw line. And that 29 points represents a career high for him. I don't know how he could have been much better in his first game in an LSU uniform. No, I, think, I think the staff knew as well what that career mark was because when he hit it on the free throw line, they took him out, and you won't see him again tonight. But there he is, and if you missed it, Catch him early next time because he's a fun player to watch. 
all sorts of moves around the baseline. He showed his range with the three-pointer. To your point about his numbers, 10 of 11 from the floor, 7 of 8 from the line, hit both of his three-pointers, five rebounds, and an assist. And he sat out seven minutes of the first half, and he's going to sit out the final 12 of this half. Yo. Still nearly nine minutes to go in the second half. A three ball up from the right side, and it's down at the bottom of the twine by George Ivory the third. He's out of Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah, he played at Arkansas Pine Bluff, somebody that George Ivory's familiar with when he mm -hmm. was head coach, came to Valley with them. Wilkinson from deep on line but long off the iron. Travel. Oh, it's got to jump ball. Hmm. Possession arrow favors LSU. <laughs> LSU lost it, but it's going to stay with the Tigers. LSU had uh, nine players in the NBA when the season started this year. Nine players over the course of six teams. In the SEC with a whole lot of representation in the NBA 92 players from SEC schools and he's been on the bench for a while Wright and Ward with 12 and 11 respectively and if you're an LSU women's basketball fan bad news from Las Vegas Colorado 92 LSU 78 the Tigers led 16 to 14 at the end of the first quarter but then were outscored 24 to 16 in the second quarter and uh, Colorado really put it on LSU the defending national champion and won it 92 78 Kim Mulkey is not one that takes to losing lightly but I could I can just imagine at halftime after giving up 24 in the second quarter she probably tried to light a fire and her post game might be very simple she can walk in and say well so much for all the hype about being number one in the easy road back to a national championship time to get to work and she'll just put it to bed and they'll learn their lesson. They'll come home and get ready for Thursday night when they drop the banner. And I promise you, that'll be the last time they start looking back. They'll remember it with the banner drop. It'll be an emotional night and a fun night for everybody here. And after that, it'll be all business. Congratulations to the LSU Tigers soccer team, which uh, has made the NCAA tournament. And we'll take on Memphis in a first-round game in the Arkansas Regionals. Looked a bit awkward, but no whistle. Nice snap pass. Tigers converging on it. Reed kind of took a swipe at it. Somehow the LSU Tigers come the other way. Stewart kicks it right side. Three ball, a little bit short. And LSU is starting to show that length you were talking about earlier in the ball game with their size. Maybe not all the ball, but look at the rebound. Look how they're just elevating with all the players up high to get the rebound. It looked like a bag of snakes in that lane. <laughs> Long and lean, Derek Fountain eventually going up, called out of bounds with the ball in his possession of four opportunities for LSU. How about this? That was the first turnover for LSU in this half. That's hard to believe. That, that's, that's a great stat. Great efficiency to see that number. I was just looking during the last time out. Mississippi Valley has had two. Now, look, they've struggled all night long. Their one star has been Raquan Brown, who's the only player in double digits. But two paint points in the entire second half for Valley. And speaking of turnovers, only eight in the game for the Tigers, seven of them coming in the first half. Seven minutes to go. Shot clock at seven, foul called on Fountain. That's his first foul. Team foul number eight, one and one coming for Rico Gibson. 
He's from Memphis. That three tossed in by Stewart. Carlos Stewart. The second bucket of the game. Second three-pointer of the game. Now he comes to LSU with a reputation as a scorer. Not so much tonight, but he's a guy with great offensive potential. He shot 40% from behind the line out at Santa Clara. Wilkinson passes up a three. This is Wilkinson at the top. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Wilkinson takes the handoff and an offensive foul, perhaps an illegal pick. That's exactly what it was. Fountain had the ball. He tossed it behind Wilkinson, but once he did to give it behind him, he went in to try to set a screen, but he just kept moving, clearing out a path, and that's what they call the offensive foul. So the lead is 90 to 43. It's pretty certain LSU is going to get to the century mark in the first game. Six minutes to go, 10 points to do it. Reed clears the rebound. LSU set to win its 10th straight season opener. Three ball from the wing, yes! Carlos Stewart, 10 points for him. He's the fourth in double figures now for LSU. Do we have five? Who did I miss? Ward's got 11. Collins has 11. Baker with the game high 29. Wright with 12. And Stewart with 10. With Stewart. So five players in double digits in the scoring column for LSU. I wonder if they, I'm wondering if they called that a two. Officially, they're showing it at nine. They might have called him, but they might have given him a two-pointer. That is going to count. It just beat the shot clock. Rico Gibson flails it in. How about that wide open pass? Can you get any more open than Fountain was at the rim? Uh, that's just a team that's just tired. Nobody in green paying attention to him. Just ready for the clock to wind down. Good eyes over LSU. You keep playing. Nice job just looking underneath for the easy layup. 95-46. Let's go back and look at Gibson beat the buzzer. You see the clock up there on the right-hand side. There he is spinning, and yeah, three-tenths of a second. Floating away in front of his own bench. It makes two in double digits now for Valley as he has 10 on two of four shooting, the five of seven from the line. And here's the other guy in double digits at the free throw line, Raquan Brown. He was particularly good in the first half. He's been held to just three points in the second half, but he's got 17 tonight. And Mississippi Valley will make some substitutions here. Daniel Umo is in the game. And for those of you scoring at home, he's now 25, not 35 like I had. So did I. <laughs> Trust you. So did everybody. It'll <laughs> take a while trying to find that one. I was going to say, Ellis' free throw shooting right now, now 21 of 30 for 70%, but... 12 three-pointers made tonight for LSU. Last year, they had seven games with double-digit made three-pointers, so they start out this season game one with 12 made. Still 4.27 to go. Hunter Dean will get some free throws. Looking for his first points in an LSU uniform. 0 for 4 is Hunter Dean at the free-throw line tonight. He's been in the game since Will Baker was recalled to the bench. That's Dean's first point, and you can see the smile on his face. You know he's got family and friends and made the way over from Mandeville with the cheering that they gave him, thus the reason for the big smile. He averaged 8.7 points per game, and we told you earlier, his 64% field goal pursuit was fourth best in school history at GW. Well, the coaches were telling us that he's got 
some parts about his game that are impressive for a big guy, and they, they, they like his potential. He's not going to be an instant star, but they think he can really contribute and be part of this this LSU success this year. He said he's very athletic for his size. He's great off the screen, but he also talked about how he's a very smart defender. That's great to have at 6'10". As you were to your point earlier, you talked about having certain players in the lineup, lineup where you could have a 7-footer, a 6'10", and a 6'9". You've got that kind of size, but you have quick feet and smart. Huge advantage. You'll see him on the floor just because of that. There's another 6'10 available at, at Jalen Reed as well. Let's take a timeout right here, shall we? Three minutes and 52 seconds to go. LSU 97. And the opponent, 47. Little Caesar's Stuff Crazy Bread is just three forty-nine. Order on. This is Lee Mc And talk about what you've seen that may be a little different from last year's team and uh, where the potential may lie after a very small window to make observations. But nonetheless, we start with uh, nearly four mi 40 minutes of basketball right. in the books and LSU with some uh, a lot of points tonight. Well, I go back to what we talked about with Coach McMahon this afternoon. We said, look, you had a lot of success last year, right, before you got to conference. Yeah, then only you, one then, loss right, in non-conference play. Then you win your conference opener, and then things went south. Um, but it was it was the the, the the sense of team and the players together where, again, last year they had to throw bodies together to field the roster. What's been interesting tonight is just to watch these guys because when you talk to the coaches, all of the staff said they really like this team, what they're developing with the guys they brought in. You notice they haven't really emptied the bench. They're about to start getting a few other players in, but they want to see how these guys have worked together. And I thought that first unit played very, very well. We've seen their ability to stretch the floor, but they've also been aggressive going to the basket. That's going to be a goal 10 there. So it'll be fun to watch them over the next couple weeks as they get in here. Nichols on Friday, then they go to that tournament for a couple games. But just to see how these guys develop, since these are more of the players that they, this coaching staff has targeted and want to fit into this system. Adam Benayoun has checked in. He wears number 25. Bina Yoon on the right wing in front of the LSU bench. He's got it now. He'll take a three. And he's got it. That's the way you do it. You sit on the bench the whole game. You come out. You establish offensive position in front of your bench. You get a pass. You knock it down. You've been in the game four seconds, and you're in the scoring column. That's right. You hold up that follow through as well, and the team loved it. Set up on the right wing, just pass it around. Valley's decided now they want to go to a zone defense. Look at him wide open. You see the bench ready for it and celebrating with them. That's a fun way to start the season and knowing that your bucket put your team over the century mark. Back yep. to 100. It goes from 99 to 102. Chicka boom, chicka boom. Don't you just love it? <laughs> Collins clears the rebound. Traveling called against the Tigers. Turnovers have not been a problem tonight. That's only 11 and only four in the second half. LSU has doubled up. The Delta Devils, 50, 102 to 51. Nicely done, high off the window, and kissed home by Donvan Sanders. Especially when you had Hunter Dean right there in front of you, elevating, forcing to go up and over his, his long reach. Sanders has 13 now. By the way, that three ball just tossed in by Adam... Bina Yu is, uh, he, he's a walk-on, a walk-on junior. So it's a big moment when a walk-on can get in the game and quickly score. Absolutely. He played one game last year, had a chance for two games in his freshman season. That one crawls over. And a 
the bucket by Rico Gibson. That's a 12 for him now. Less than a minute and a half remains. This is Dean at the free throw line. Now Hannibal. Bina Yoon fires again. This time he misses. Dean, good offensive rebound, and he's fouled in traffic after he did an outstanding job of pulling off the miss. So free throws coming for Hunter Dean. That's a great rebound, one-handed with the left hand. Well, and he had a great job of blocking out, too. Had great position to get that. Try to hit this one after hitting his last two. So he's two for seven right now. Seventy seconds to play. A good opening win, as you said, Lynn. The outcome was never really in question. The key will be what will LSU take with that a nice shot up there on the inside, powering one in. Yeah, that's what, Umo. What, what does LSU take from it now? You know, the big thing. Second half's gotten a little sloppy. LSU has certainly shown its athletic dominance in putting this game away. But now they go back to work for a couple of days before Nichols rolls into town, and then they hit the road for a couple of games. So. You know, Matt McMahon will be happy with the win, certainly. But the more important thing will be what the team takes away from as they're trying to build this new identity. As we mentioned, he's kind of looking at this as, as year one. And How about the, the walk-on, though? Another three-pointer. Bina Yoon has come off the bench and stroked two threes. One oh six to fifty-seven. As we are seconds away from closing it out. How about that? Rico Gibson again. That's 14 for him. LSU can dribble it out. 15 seconds to play. 106-60 is the score, and that's going to be the final score. So the LSU Tigers in game one of the new college basketball season go wire to wire with a 106 to 60 victory over Mississippi Valley State's Delta Devils. If you